Hi, welcome to Caterpillar Classroom. My name's Sophie and today I'd like to walk you through the practical steps involved in rearing Helicoverpa armidra using our Helicoverpa rearing kits. Come with me now into the classroom and I'll take you through the steps involved. Now that your Helicoverpa rearing kit has arrived, open it up and inside you will find some rearing cups and lids around four per student. Inside this Ziploc bag you will find nappy liners, some cotton dental roll, some paper towel, and a pair of feather light forceps. You will be provided with a paintbrush, but you may need to find some more depending on the number of students you have or the time you have. You'll also find a container which will either have eggs or neonates in it. Neonates are small uh, hatchlings. And lastly, you will also find a bag of diet, which is for the larvae to feed on. This bucket will be used in the latter part of the rearing stage as the moth bucket. To start the larval rearing process, take your diet and cut open the bag with a pair of scissors. Then use your ruler to cut the diet into small cubes. Once you have your diet cut, take your rearing cups and place one cube of diet into each cup. Next, take your container of neonates or eggs. Pick up a neonate on the very tip of your paintbrush. Bring it over to your cup with the diet in it and gently place the larva onto the diet by twisting the paintbrush. Once each of your rearing cups has an egg or neonate in it, take your thumbtack or needle or a Stanley knife and just pierce several holes in the lid of your cup so that your neonate will have oxygen as it grows. A useful way to store your cups is in an egg carton or a tray and that way you can move them around your classroom or take them home easily. Make sure you keep them out of direct sunlight and away from air conditioners or heaters to avoid temperature extremes. During the warmer months the caterpillars take between 20 to 30 days to pupate and may take longer in winter. The caterpillar has everything it needs inside the cup in terms of food and moisture from the diet that you originally placed in the cup. As a larva reaches full size, it will begin to pupate. You'll notice that it burrows down into the remaining material in the cup to form a pupil chamber. A week or so after the caterpillars begin burrowing to pupate, check to see if the majority of your larvae have pupated. If they have, it's time now to transfer your pupae into the moth bucket. So take your empty bucket, remove the lid, and what you want to do is just cut a slit with your Stanley knife in the lid about one to two centimetres in from the edge. Once you've cut a slit in it, use your scissors to cut a circle around the lid. Take your bucket and place it on top of two sheets of paper towel. Take a pen or pencil and draw around the base of the bucket and cut out the paper towel just inside the line. Take your two sheets of cut out paper towel and place them in the bottom of your moth bucket. What you then need to do is to take a cup, remove the lid, and because the pupae bury to the bottom of the cup, you may need to scrape away some diet to reveal your pupa. Pick up the pupa with the feather light forceps so that you don't damage your pupa. Remove it carefully from the cup and you'll be able to see if your pupa is alive because its tail will wiggle. If your pupa is alive, place it at the bottom of the bucket on top of the paper towel. Repeat this process until you have transferred all healthy pupae into your moth bucket. Make sure you discard any dead or deformed pupae. What you'll now need to do is to take a single sheet of the nappy liner we provided in your helicover for rearing kit. Place the nappy liner over the bucket so it covers the entire opening. Then take the lid that you cut the circle out of and place it on top and secure it down so it holds the nappy liner down firmly. Check your pupae daily for signs of emergence. Typically this will occur between two to three weeks from when your larvae first pupate. Now that your moths have emerged, they will need something to feed on. What you need to do is take an empty rearing cup and lid, a Stanley knife, 
and cut two slits in a cross shape in the top of the lid. What you then need to do is take one of your cotton dental rolls and press the cotton dental roll through the cross in the top of the lid so it's sitting halfway down into your cup and halfway on top. The next step is to make the solution for the honey pot. So take 10% of ordinary honey and 90% of warm water and combine them in a mixing jar. Shake them around or stir them with a teaspoon until all the honey is dissolved. So just fill up your honey pot about three quarters of the way up and then place the lid back on top. Keep your remaining honey solution in the fridge and refill your honey pot as needed. Once you've prepared your honey pot, place it inside the bucket. Just be careful to not let any moths fly out as you do this. Once it's on the bottom of the bucket, make sure to secure your lid back down so your moths don't escape. The dental roll acts like an artificial flower, providing the nectar that the moths need for survival. Within three to four days after emergence, the moths will have mated and will be beginning to lay eggs. The majority of these eggs will be laid on the nappy liner. I'll now walk you through the steps of how to collect these eggs so that you can continue rearing your helicoverpa colony if you wish. The first step in the egg collection process is to remove the lid from your bucket carefully. Take a new nappy liner and place it on top of the old nappy liner that has the eggs on it. Then take your lid again and just place it very gently on top of your bucket. Hold the new nappy liner at one end and at the opposite end, pull the old nappy liner with the eggs on it out from underneath the new nappy liner. You want to do this very carefully so you minimise the amount of eggs that fall off the old nappy liner and also to stop any moss from escaping from your bucket. Then close the lid down so that your moths can't escape. Carefully fold your nappy liner with eggs on it and take the Ziploc bag provided in your Caterpillar classroom kit and place your nappy liner carefully inside. Then just before you close it, make sure that you do have some air in there so if your eggs hatch into neonates, they have oxygen to breathe. Repeat the egg collection process daily. The moths will typically continue to lay eggs for three to five days, after which time egg production will decline and the moths will begin to die. If you wish to hatch your eggs and continue rearing your helicoverpa for a second generation, visit the Caterpillar Classroom website where you can order more diet. Alternatively, if you wish to cease the project, place your bag of eggs and your moth bucket in a freezer overnight. This is a humane way of discarding your insects. The next morning, you may wish to examine the dead moths using a hand lens or microscope as an additional activity for your classroom. If you don't wish to do this, you can simply discard your moths and eggs in the general waste. Thank you for being a part of Caterpillar Classroom. We hope you've learnt a lot and enjoyed the Caterpillar Classroom project. If you would like more detailed information on the rearing process, please review our technical manual on the Caterpillar Classroom website. You can also visit our Frequently Asked Questions page, our Facebook page, or submit an online query at www.caterpillarclassroom.com. Thanks for watching and happy helicoverpa rearing.